Okay, we are starting on the NASCAR group build that's being hosted by our good friends, Mr. Jeff Cianconelli, and also our good buddy, Fred Henry. And uh, we have until November, hmm, I think November 15th, to finish this guy off. And we are, where are we now? Right now, we are May 16th. So, yeah, it sounds like we got some time. But here's the thing. Acme. Acme is the last weekend of October, and uh, they have a NASCAR theme for their build this year. So that means we have to get this done eh, 15, 16 days earlier, something like that. 17, 17 days earlier. <laughs> it's getting shorter every second. Um, so it's time to get started on this guy here. So let's get in there and start clipping some parts. Well, we can't do that yet because we've never built a kit like this before. This is a Salvino's JR kit. And, um, yeah, we've done an open box review on it. We've seen many videos, and we have a very, very good friend who, who likes building these uh, and, and uh, does some good videos about the Salvino stuff. But uh, still, I personally haven't tackled one of these kits before. So there's something very, very important that we have to do, and that is pull everything out of the box and get all the way back down to the bottom. Look at this. Look at this brick. That's... <laughs> Oh, that's cool. Okay, nice packing job. So, uh, I was going through the instructions um, last night or the other day. I can't remember which. We've had a house full of people. It's been awesome, but I'm 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 all messed up in my time scales here. So we went through the instructions, and I like doing this where you write down the paint codes and stuff, so you don't have to keep flipping back to the front or whatever. And then I thought that's kind of small. I'm gonna you know, so I, I wrote it larger. So there we go. And then I wanted to make sure that I had all the paints on hand that we wanted to use. And we have most of them, so that's good. And I got to buy one or two jars. And then I realized we had this this little uh, this little piece here. And this guy is some uh, some quick little corrections for the instructions. And I have to say, uh, the Salvino's team, this is a uh, this is very welcome, uh, especially for somebody who has not built a kit like this before, has no idea what they're going to be getting into. I've built NASCAR kits before, and I've built model cars before once or twice, but uh, again, this is very very helpful. So uh, little mistakes have been corrected. That's great. Okay, so. Uh, this tells us where to reference in the instructions, and I made some notes and corrections and instructions. So, and then also you'll notice that I made little check marks. So, like, yep, did that one, did that one, did that one, did that one, did all of these. So, uh, in a few areas there, there's some corrections where it, should, it says G108, and it, sh it says uh, C108, and it's actually supposed to be G108. So that type of thing, uh, just little typos. Uh, but yeah, we went through the instructions and made some marks here and there. And let's see if we can... Uh, yep, there we go. Made, made the corrections on there. My writing is terrible. I'm sorry. But uh, so that's cool. Um, I was kind of going through and getting a feel for how how everything's supposed to build up and what we're supposed to tackle, how the painting callouts are. And everything seems like it's going to be um, pretty straightforward. So that's good. Okay, so it's not, we're not going to be too much out of our element here type of thing. Uh, if you've built a Tamiya kit or a Hasegawa kit, you're not going to have a problem with this as it would appear. Uh, nice little note here for the Collectors Club thing. And I have to do give a shout out to my friend Louie over Autistic Modeler because he gifted this uh, this kit to us. And um, it was totally unexpected. And we gifted him back a kit that uh, was totally out of his wheelhouse, which was a Porsche... No, excuse me, Jaguar. It was a Jaguar. Uh, it was like the SJ220 or something like that. So he did a really cool job on it. As a matter of fact, matter of fact, hang on just a second. Yeah, so at the last meeting, Louie actually gave us the model that he built. And he was like, here you go. This is uh, this is for you. You can put this on your shelf. I'm like, okay, cool. And then I'm like, wait a minute. Do I have to give you this back? He goes, no, no, you're cool. I'm like, oh, good, because I, I want to keep this. But, uh, Louie, thank you very much for building this and for gifting us some, the finished model, too. That was unneeded, but very, very kind, sir. So, thank you. All right. Now, I'm going to put this in a safe place right over here. Nope, that's not a safe place. Okay, it's going up here on the shelf. No, not the shelf of despair. That's going on the shelf of, I need a case. So, looks like everything on this thing here is actually in pretty good shape. I mean... See if we can get some light on this subject. There we go. 
slab sides but uh, look at those flares those are cool those are cool and we want to get this thing uh sanded up and painted and then start doing the, the decals dessels dassels the cows water slide transfers uh yeah because apparently there is a ton of them several sheets of them and uh not to mention the fact that i was having a hard time trying to figure out what color to put on this thing because the instructions say uh of, you know extremely light gray so i went looking through my paint stash for extremely light gray and i came up with this this is a tamiya color this is for their aircraft series this is like barely gray and i think it should be called barely gray but it's light gray as 16 light gray usaf and i thought dude that that should be okay i compared it to the decals it's really hard to see on camera but i compared it to the decal sheet where it's supposed to be body color it's extremely close so i think we might have a winner here with our color and uh is this glossy i think this is actually a semi-gloss if i remember correctly that's okay we're probably going to do a clear coat over the whole thing anywho so yeah so we're going to try that on there also this is a great color for starship enterprise um not no stinking a not no stinking b but the original one so there's that okay uh something else in the kit here we have all these awesome looking decals here for around the windows and stuff that's cool one of my biggest problems is trying to mask off and do window stuff so this is going to be slick so uh, we're going to put that up here and keep those protected but yeah we're going to uh, go ahead and start snipping stuff and sanding things and gluing stuff and all that kind of jazz so we'll come back when we have a little bit more to share right so is it time to get snippy with it no still not yet we're still doing some prep work here uh, we just went over the entire car body with uh, a Timia sanding pad, which I think was about 3,000 grit, just to break the uh, plastic a little bit so we can um, get some good adhesion for our primer that's going to be coming up here uh, fairly soon. But um, we did have to go through and take care of a couple of uh, parting lines. Uh, there was a there was a uh, right right through here, uh, kind of a wicked one right through there, and this side wasn't so bad. But we went after it with a uh, 240 grit sanding stick that took it down real good, and then we kind of backed it out a little bit with a 004 no 400 grit sanding stick there, and then hit it with the Tamiya sanding sponge to blend it all in. And um, that you know, mostly the parting lines on this thing are amazing. I had a hard time finding them. I had to actually feel for them. There was a little bit of a wicked one right back here on the top of the rear quarter panel. Uh, that came out really easy, also with the two hundred sanding stick. And then I just went over the whole car with the uh, with the sanding sponge. And um, I don't know if you guys ever noticed this. If you use a sanding sponge, doesn't matter if it's to me or whoever use a sanding sponge and then all of a sudden everything starts sticking to the car body i'm wondering if sanding sponges cause a lot of static electricity during this during the sanding process so uh you know science i wonder if that's if that's just me or if that's something else you guys have noticed a lot of molded in detail up here oh boy look at all that and what's what's great about sanding the entire car body is especially if you're not familiar with the kit like i am uh it really gives us an idea of how everything fits together flows the detail that's on there the detail we have to watch out for and i really like that it's kind of an, a way to get acquainted to the uh, to the kit here like for instance i didn't realize the exhaust uh exits on here were supposed to be that far forward that's uh that's really interesting that's really that's just killer that's cool so yeah i really like this uh the, the feel of this plastic it's 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 hardy but it's not like super thick like some of the Ravel stuff that's coming out right now. So this is uh, feeling really good. I like that. And uh, now we're going to get on to the, the getting the hood prepped. And then we'll see about washing this up. And then, uh, of course, snipping this part out. And then uh, getting on to the paint scheme. So we're going to get all the body panels. Oh, I got to do the chassis too. That's right, because it's the same color. So we'll, uh, we'll see how that goes. But I'm kind of more focused on just doing the body for right now okay so it is now wednesday we uh did a, a lot of work on this guy yesterday primarily around the engine bay uh if you can see right here we have a little a chunk of styrene kind of glued there and then one over here also oh we don't want to focus one uh glued in place right here 
Why? Well, I got a little over exuberant with my sanding sticks and I took it back a little too far here. I was taking care of the, uh, the, sprue, the sprue nibs that are on here and uh, I took it back a little too far. This, this curved engine bay threw me for a loop and of course I'm sanding this with a flat sanding stick so you can probably guess, uh, yeah, I flattened out that curve a little bit there. And uh, back here, I, 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 I nicked it pretty badly and uh, it's, kind of, it's gonna show up when the hood's in place. So I've got some pieces uh, curing right now. When those are fully cured up, we're gonna come back and sand them back and get everything to fit up and match real nicely. But uh, so far, everything's cool. But I, I went on to uh, work on the engine here a little bit. And um, I glued up the block together. I glued up. I glued the block together and uh, decided, you know what? We're going to see that valley. So I put a little bit of, uh, of this Tamiya uh, thick surface primer in there. And then let that cure up and then sanded it back a little bit so that it would be nice and smooth. I thought that would look a little better. Um, but uh, yeah, you can still see that dark line in there. That's just because of the, the nature of the silver plastic that this is uh, uh, made out of. But um, yeah, this is all glued up and everything. We have some pieces and parts that need to be painted. So we're going to be getting uh, ready to prime all this stuff. And then uh, I'll probably base this whole thing in... in um, in flat black and then go from there for if we do any metallics and stuff so so there's that uh the um this is really really cool because it looks like there's some sort of a fuel rail i'm, I'm guessing i'm not even sure what the heck this is but the, this goes right down inside of there like that i think i have the direction correctly but there's actually little 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 divots molded into you can see them right there mold it into to capture this so you know precisely where it's going to go uh, along with the uh, the actual intake manifold itself with I believe that's the throttle body on there I guess she's using throttle bodies now but yeah it goes right up there notches in place bingo very very cool nice looking detail in there too so that's pretty sweet but uh, yeah so uh, this is just pressure fit in front here to, to see how the alignment is and then uh, we're going to get the, uh, the oil paint and this guy right here and I think do, 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 rotate 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 there we go yeah it's gonna be going oops that actually goes through the little hole there like so there we go do I have that backwards no I don't I just don't have it fit very well that's all oh there we go sorry duh all right there we go I had to do that off camera a little bit so uh, that oil pan is supposed to be a brass color. I think we're just going to go for gold because we don't have any brass on hand. So we're going to do that. And then uh, we're going to continue on from there. And then I remember how I was saying in the, in the last segment, uh, we literally liked all this molded in detail here. Well, on this rollout version, we have to sand all that off. So yikes. <laughs> don't. It actually says so right here in the instructions on segment two. Sand off cameras and antennas. Okay, cool. That'll make decaling a heck of a lot easier. Yay! So we're going to get onto that too. And we'll be back when we have more to show. So we have gone ahead and um, let's see here. We've covered uh, section number three and uh, gone ahead and Oh, by the way, there's a little correction here about that they didn't have the part numbers on here, so they let us know. And this is pretty important, too, because uh, this forward bar here looks like that little tab looks like it's supposed to be horizontal, and we tried to get that as best we could. Um, but uh, we had to drill out the holes just a little bit on, on these pieces here, on the side pieces, in order to accept the, the pins that were coming off these rods. Um, the rod seems like it might actually be sort of keyed, We'll show you here on the part in a second, but uh, we just had to keep rotating it until it sort of dropped into place, and that was great. But yeah, we had to chase the holes a little bit. Um, not a hundred percent sure what size this drill bit is, so I'm going to back up. There we go. Um, not a hundred percent sure what size this drill bit is, but let's get a measurement on. I don't know. Maybe the drill bit shaft will help us out. So let's let's go to millimeters. There we go. Sorry, I did that off camera. 1.2 millimeters in diameter for the shaft. And then let's switch over 0 0.04 inches uh, across. So in diameter, so it's, yep. I'm not 100% sure what that, well, not, I'm not quite sure what that measures out to in um, fractions. 
but uh, 1.2 millimeters in diameter saves the day. We've had to chase a couple of holes here and there. It's just one of those things that happens in the model kit. So here we have the uh, the built up um, cabin. <laughs> so I wanted to say a driver's box, but um, a cockpit. Yeah, I guess the cockpit will work out. Okay, great. So instructions say to set this in place and then build this this assembly up off of this and do not glue it to this yet because that is very important uh, according to instructions it looks like we're going to be coming up against something here a little bit later on where we we, we can't have that piece down there and we need to be able to move this away so uh that's great we taped uh with some small pieces of tape across these this join here so we could get these um these side pieces to stay on really really well and and uh kind of like act as a third and fourth hand for us while we glued in these pieces here now i was mentioning a second ago oh let's, let's zoom in a little bit better sorry i was mentioning a second ago that we had to keep rotating for this to finally drop in and because of this inner panel here and the way this hole is is uh is formed or molded uh we just Put it in place and kept rotating it looked like it was a little bit uh the, the the pin was a little bit off center of the entire rod so uh just kept rotating until it found its home and then we were happy it didn't really care over here on this side so this seems like the driver's side seems like it's the more important of the two a little bit of cleanup left to do on some of the uh tubes um and then we kind of try, tried to get that bracket piece there as horizontal as possible the bits do have a little bit of a bow to them so i was glad to see that the bow sort of goes with uh with the you know they, they they agree to each other so maybe that's an important deal and then there's this parting line right here that i wasn't 100 percent sure i should remove i wasn't quite sure if that's supposed to be there or if that's just uh, a parting line from the mold we'll see in a little bit but i still have the option of going back and sanding that off if i want to so everything else is glued in place here and this makes this is built up from count with me boys and girls one two three four five six seven seven ah, 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 pieces eight if you count that one there <laughs> but i really do like how this is kind of chunky it, it kind of locks right into place there then you can put in your bulkheads and start building from that. I think that's really slick. That's really, really cool. So um, good job there, boys. Everything else is going so uh, fine so far. We have all the engine stuff that we've been working on in the last video, last part of the video. Uh, we got uh, the color coats on those. We're waiting those to cure, for those to cure up, and then we'll do some more gluing on that. And then we'll carry on. But for right now, I think we're going to call it a day because uh, it's starting to get pretty warm, and we got some stuff we still got to do, so... Uh, we'll check back with you a little bit later on, possibly some more tomorrow. All right, y'all, take it easy. Oh, yes, one last thing for today. Uh, I forgot to come back here and show you guys, but we were supposed to knock off all those antennas and stuff, the, the camera that was on there. That all sanded off really nicely. It seems like they have sort of like a soft compound plastic. Uh, it, was, it filed right off. We used our handy-dandy Tamiya file. Uh, didn't have to hardly do any polishing afterwards to get out any uh, sanding marks. I did have a little part, uh, a little mistake here where I had gouged it because it slipped off and, and hit it pretty hard. So we have a little bit of uh, primer, thick primer in there to help fill that. And when that fully cures up, we're going to try shooting this with some primer just to see how we did on our sanding, st uh, sanding scratches and stuff. But um, one uh one one big deal uh we had to watch out for we're gonna zoom in here real quick so watch yourselves watch your face here we go uh one of the antennas it looked like kind of goes over this panel line right here right in this general area so uh we we attacked that we sanded it flat didn't worry about it we just sanded it flat till everything was smooth yes there was a little bit of a a, a chunk inside of there so we went after that with uh, a very small triangle shape jeweler's file Ooh, we can't focus on that at all let's zoom in on that guy there yeah so we went at it with this really uh small uh jeweler's file triangle shape and that allows us to get right down inside that groove 
and just lightly go over the top of that until it matched up with the rest of the paneling. So that's how we took care of that. So we just wanted to uh, make mention of that real quick. And you could probably tell a little bit right there that you can see just a little bit of a, a, a dimple um, where I have to come back and do the other side of it because we paid attention to the forward edge of it, not to pay attention to the back edge of it, I guess. But uh, under under the, the uh, telescopic vision of the camera, um or the macro lens of the camera excuse me i get those mixed up uh that uh this actually doesn't look too bad to the eye but under the uh under the microscope here we can see a little bit of it so yeah looking good we actually have a little bit of fill back here on the uh, on the back fender we gotta sand down a little bit more because there was a little bit of a depression there but no big deal all this side seems totally fine uh let's see yeah i think we're body the body's looking really really sweet just got to take care of that oops on my part there but that that's what makes us a good model builder you know we're able to go back and correct our mistakes all right yeah we're going to go ahead and sign out and we'll talk to you back a little bit later on well happy friday everybody uh we totally skipped over thursday because that was uh did a lot of errands and stuff got to go have lunch with a good friend chris and then off to filming uh, model car guys with um on youtube with mr lucas e over at his place so a fun day very very fun day you'll have to excuse me i've developed some sort of chest thing over the last couple of days i think it's from allergies it's just one of those things so um <clears throat> you'll have to excuse me if i sound a little different what we have done we've got the uh the body and primer and i'm just going to show you this and i bumped it and then almost talked it off but we got the body and primer and we have a little bit of a fluffing going on here i call it's kind of hard to show you from this camera angle but uh it's it's what happens when the primer sort of uh reacts with the plastic because we have sandaled sanded through sandaled sanded through the uh, the top layer of the plastic down into the uh the, the softer plastic it seems like and that reacts with the paint a little bit it's fixable uh we'll just uh, i was expecting that to happen so i wasn't surprised when i saw it and uh just it's just an, another situation of just some more sanding and priming sanding and priming so um there's that we did uh get the chance this morning to sit down and do some uh hand painting uh of the engine because what we did we had done and we're going to disassemble this here because i was mocking it up to see how it was going to fit in there and i did have a question i had to sort of sort out um, we did get the rear end of the car put together. We have to clean up all of our seams and stuff, but we wanted to see how this fit together. I don't think this is going to hold a lot of fuel, <laughs> but we wanted to put this together before we start assembling the rear end of the car. So we got that there and we're going to pull this off the chassis pan. So I did have a question about how this engine was supposed to fit in here because I wasn't a hundred percent sure uh where these little ears are going to fit into and it, i thought they were going to sit on top of these little shoulders right here it sort of looks like that in instructions but actually they sit behind it there's a little c notch in there that they both slip into and then it because at, at first i was like the engine's kind of tipped a little bit a, a little bit too much it seemed like so then once we uh actually figured out where it's supposed to go it all slipped into place there i was like okay great awesome and i put this uh front cross member piece in there so we could figure out was this too spread or was it uh, just the right width? And it looks like, uh, you know, by sticking that in there, it looks like we're, we're right on the money. So that's great. And then, of course, this diamond shape uh, brace that goes on the top of everything. We wanted to set that in place, make sure that that makes, you know, just, just to double check all of our positioning and such. So let's see if we can pull this guy out with minimal damage because it did... Uh, it did want to be a little finicky getting in there. There we go. Let's set that aside. But yeah, this is all hand painted. Uh, we based it in flat black and then went back over it with a series of different colors of metallics that I have on hand. I even used some of this guy here. This is steel red. I'm not 100% sure what that means, but uh, we did the engine block in that steel red color. I like that. Then we did aluminum on the valve covers. Uh, the instructions do call for brass on the oil pan. We went ahead and did that in gold. When That's that's uh, actually rattle canned. And then um, this, uh, I, th I think that's the sump pump there. That is actually going to be, um, uh, what is that? Oh, titanium gold. 
uh, this little block here is titanium gold and so is the starter motor casing that's titanium gold and then this is engine block color back in here and then up on top we did uh, we did gloss black on the uh, valve covers but we did it real quick so it sort of has a semi-gloss look to it I like that and the coil packs have a flat black on there and then we have a metallic what is this one here metallic gray for the top of the throttle body so I don't know, I'm liking how all the, all the different colors are sort of fitting in and, and uh, transitioning and stuff. This doesn't look like it's in place 100% correctly. I'm still fiddling with that. I think it might have shifted a little bit, but well, it's not glued in place. It's actually just sort of wedged in there. And we might have to do a little bit of uh, fixing on that. But otherwise, uh, everything else fit together really, really well. There's a, a whole stack of belts on the front of this thing. I have to go back and, and uh, paint up the uh, the pulleys. Looking forward to doing that. And uh, yeah, so the engine's pretty much done other than uh, the little bit of detail painting we got to do and then mounting it in. And I'm, I'm so happy that they're like, mount this in the car and then go in and add the exhaust pipe. So... Uh, that's that's the next step here is to oh, I just clipped these off the trees and then cleaned them up a little bit. Usually on something like this, you're going to have like a really big party line on there, but no, just a couple of swipes with a 240 grit uh, sanding stick. It took care of that just fine. And the thing about this silver plastic is you can sand something, but it still remains. You can still see it there because of how the plastic is. I'm not sure why that is. But, uh, you know, you, you could actually end up sanding this stuff too much because you can still see that little nub, that little nib right there. It's actually gone smooth to the touch, but you still see it there. So it's kind of weird. Um, but uh, we're, we're going to be mounting this up to engine block. Make sure that these actually fit in the, uh, in the, the locator holes so we're not surprised by anything there. And then um, uh, we're probably not going to mount the engine right away because we still have to paint up this dude. And uh, and probably this guy here, because I think this is supposed to be white also. So yeah, we're still doing a lot on here. But I, I'm, I'm I'm leaving this off for right now because there is some stuff to have to detail paint on on the uh, that's not a firewall the back the rear wall. And uh, I just want to make sure everything in here is nice, nice and uh, sealed up. But we did add our space framey type thing back here. This this is so cool. I mean, if I was a sci-fi model kit builder and I wanted to kit bash a model kit for for some for some parts and stuff this would be the kit for that i tell you what because of this type of thing this is all one piece with this little shelf glued in here and i'm looking at this thing going man i've i've got like space 1999 ideas going on you know scratch building stuff you know things that would attach to the eagle one or whatever but uh yeah so uh we're doing we're going gangbusters on this guy here we got our lower a arms in place and they're not a hundred percent uh, I just have them slightly tacked so that they're a little bit wiggly still because we're not 100% sure of our ride height. When we were uh, filming with our buddy Matt yesterday over at Lucas E's, um, he, we were talking about the ride height and stuff. He was talking about the four penny trick where you tape four pennies to the bottom of the chassis pan here and then that helps you set up your ride height. So I'm like, oh yeah, we don't want to position these entirely permanently just yet because we're going to have to do some adjusting, I think, front and rear and uh so yeah so that we're trying to keep stuff as as um flexible i guess as possible it wouldn't be hard to go back and just drop a little bit of ca or a little bit of cement into those uh joins when we get everything sorted out so so there's that uh let's see what else we got to show you well i guess that's about it <laughs> uh let's see if we can get to the area and the instructions where we're at uh yep here we go okay so oh let's see a picture of my kids Ooh. oh god i always say hate that in elevators okay so um exhaust pipes they're gonna snake in through this larger opening here and then mount up to the bottom up to the edge inside so looks like it should be a fairly straightforward thing um but i gotta say man that all the detail in these technical drawings is just astounding i, I really like that that's just really cool i mean that's over the top you know so once we get um all this painted up and then mounted onto um i don't think we actually probably not going to mount it on there yet yeah 
but uh, we get this all painted up will be the next next bit, and then uh, we'll start, we'll 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 paint this part up too because I wanted to put together as many sub assemblies uh, for painting purposes, so I have the fewest joins possible that I have to glue with painted parts. I hope that makes sense. I'm probably not saying that quite right, but I mean we're gonna have to come back and add this this bit on later on, and this fits on here really cool too. We'll probably have to come back and fit this bit on later on because there are things that we have to place inside here after after that part. So, you know, it is what it is. Um, it's all about order of operation. And we have jumped ahead a little bit in the instructions. I was like, I want to go ahead and glue this together and see how this fits and see how it fits on the little the chassis pan and such. So, so that's where we're at there. So, yeah, we're going to go and do some painting and uh, do some priming and such. And I think I have to do some cleanup on this guy here still. I got some flash to take care of. I, I thought there was some flash on here. I mean, maybe I was wrong. Okay, uh, but uh, you know, do some cleanup on parts, and we'll go prime everything, and then we'll uh, we'll see how we see how we do. We'll come back if we can. All right, we'll see you in the next bit. Okay, so after many many hours, many many hours at the bench, uh, we time we lost track of time. We were building away, having a good time watching YouTube videos. I have to go back and comment on a whole bunch of them, but. Um, <clears throat> excuse me uh, as a matter of fact i even had to run out and go get primer because i ran out of primer i was like that was a surprise um but before i did run out to go get primer i decided to go ahead and do the uh the roll cage here uh in white primer i just figured what the what the heck you know it's already white you need to paint it white let's just hit it with the white primer and i sort of like how that looks to the point where i'm just gonna leave it i'm gonna leave the white primer no, I don't have the bottom attached yet because we're figuring out where the uh, the seat's going to get placed. And then once that gets sorted out, we're going to paint the seat. And then we can put it all back together again and glue it up for the for its final glue up. But yeah, everybody's primed up in white. Uh, we're figuring out how the radiator ducting is all going to go together. Um, I just have these pressure fit together i do have them the, the halves glued together there's a radiator that we have to paint up and this is all going to be semi-gloss black i presume uh and by the way this looks this is all actually like some sort of plastic ducting that's in the car now which is uh you know it's all different and strange but uh here's the pedal box i gotta clean off a little tab right there but uh, there's a pedal box. We'll de detail up the pedals a little bit. Uh, we've been goofing with the engine, and we have the uh, the exhaust system just mocked in place. This is just pressure fit right now. I uh, wanted to get a feel for how that's going to fit on the engine, and I think it's going to do just fine as I drop it. But uh, And now the exhaust. <laughs> so, was, like I said, there was just pressure fit on there. But uh, the engine's looking really good. I, this is the second time I've dropped it, so um, it's, it's pretty robust. Uh, so, yeah. We're going to go ahead and stop here for the day. It's a good point to stop. Um, we haven't done a, another coat of primer on this guy yet because, well, I had to go out and buy some more. But um, you can kind of see, let's see, where where did he get off to, that little bugger? There he is. Uh, kind of see in areas like right in here where there's a little bit of a tone variation in the primer back in there, right there. Uh, that those are the areas where we had to file away the um, the existing cameras and antennas and such. So uh, the, the plastic has a bit of a different feel to it there. But yeah, uh, looks cool in primer though. I really like the the, the lines and everything kind of come out. Other than when it's raw plastic. Uh, and then also yeah, so we primed up the uh, the uh, the torque tube tunnel. And, uh, yeah, this is supposed to be semi-gloss black, and that's supposed to be aluminum. But I just primed it all in white, and we're going to go back and take care of that. I'll probably probably mask this boy and then, and then spray him, because so, it's a large area to have to try and hand paint. But, um, yeah, well, I'm really liking where we're at right now. I'll probably go ahead and go and, and uh, clean this up, and then... Um, and by, by clean it, I mean wash it, because it's got fingerprints all over it. I've been handling it a lot. Probably go get this guy into uh, paint also so that we can move on with the whole process of putting everything together. But so far, I'm really, uh, really digging this build. Um, I, oh, yeah, boy, I almost forgot all of this stuff here. So this is what took up most of the day. I even uh, I even called Lucas C because I was like, yeah, how exactly is that petty bar going there? I was having a hard time translating the instructions. And... Um, we got it all finally put in, put in place and everything just kind of like 
once once it you rotate things around a little bit, it kind of finds its home and it's like, oh, okay. So, all right, cool. And I did feel like it was a good idea to go ahead and glue on this portion of the roll cage. Yes, I know we still have to put the seat in there. Um, the plan is to actually mount the seat to the bottom. Where did that get off to? I don't know what that's at now. There it is. Uh, they're gonna we're gonna mount the seat to this portion here and then we'll put the pedal box on there put the seat on there and then this is gonna oh and the transmission tunnel and then that's all gonna slide up into place and then glue that that's the plan I don't know how well that's gonna work but we'll see how that goes um, also we have to uh, we have to do that before we can put the engine in and uh, before we put the engine in, then what we, we have to put the engine in before we finish off building the rest of the front of this uh, of the car frame. So I do have a piece that's just sort of stuck in here right now, and that's just so that we could get paint on there or primer on it when we were goofing around. And we do have to paint this silver or aluminum. Uh, that is something that I completely forgot about because I got so excited about gluing on the front of the car, I was like, I, th I forgot to go and mask that off and paint it. So that's my fault. Um, and well, everything's my fault. <laughs> no one building the kit, but um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. I mean, like, I kind of like it white, so we'll see. We shall see. Uh, at least I'll know uh, if I put this in a show and there's a whole bunch of them on the table, I'll know which one's mine because it'll be white right there. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and sign off. We're gonna say thank you very much for watching. I know this is a longer format video, but we really appreciate you sticking with us, and also. We know there are a lot of other model car shows out there on YouTube to be watching, and we want to say that how grateful we are that you wanted to spend time with us watching us build one on, a model on our channel. So thank you to you. Also, thank you to all the subscribers that we picked up recently, and thank you to all of our friends and family out there that do like to watch us and hang out with us in chats and whatever. Okay, y'all, take it easy, and we'll see you next week. Bye now.